Passover. It's a time when Jewish families across our area get together around the Seder table and tell the story of Moses leading his people out of slavery in Egypt. Tonight, in honor of the holiday, we're bringing you a different story about Jewish history, but one that would have been largely forgotten if not for a Catholic priest. Father Patrick Desbois has spent over a decade investigating what has been called the Holocaust by bullets. He and his team have traveled across Eastern Europe in search of mass graves used by Nazi Germany killing squads to bury some two million Jews, or roughly a third of those who died during the Holocaust. Their deaths have long been overshadowed by the victims of concentration camps, but in the former Soviet Union, the murder there was local. Villages became mass graves as residents bore witness. To date, Father Desbois has found nearly 2,000 of these execution sites and interviewed hundreds of people about the terror. His goal, to learn from the past and stop this from ever happening again. Father Patrick Desbois joins me now to talk more about his work. Father, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for coming and spending you. some time with us here. You are a Catholic priest. You, I try. You're, you are not a historian. <laughs> yes, you're a very good Catholic priest. You're not a historian. Uh, you're not a detective. So what then drew you to this and made this become essentially your life's calling? First, it was a family story. My grandfather has been deported there, and I realized that uh, in his small village when he was sent, 18,000 Jews were shot and uh, you could find nothing. And uh, it was unknown. And so I begin to ask, where are the most grievous Jews? And when I found the first one, I realized they killed Jews on a full continent of extermination. It's why now we have effectively uh, found back mass grave of 1 million point two Jews. So, so the number, and again, in, in, in sort of looking at the work you've done and, and listening to some of your stories, I was struck by the, the, the number of people that, that you've been discovering, the, 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 the graves, the bodies. Were you surprised by that number? Yeah, I was very surprised. And all people of my team uh, from Yahad, as we call them, uh, they were surprised. I remember the biggest mass grave, 54,000 people. It was the Jews of Odessa. They told them they go to Palestine. They took a train, and after one hour, the train stopped. It was finished, no Palestine. And they had to walk kilometers and kilometers to 29 pig styles. And suddenly, around Christmas, the Romanian decided to shoot them. Uh, they refused to go, the first one. So they, they put barbed wires again around one of the pig styles, and they burned them alive. So after all these years, how do you find these sites? We find that through the archives. We work really like police with Soviet archives, with German archives. And after my team, we will go 11 person on the ground. Uh, you know, in Yarad, we train young people to do that. And with metallic detector, we look for the cartridges. And we interview the people who were present at the killing. Because they used a lot of people. And everybody wanted to watch. It was like a show, you know. I remember in a village, the director of the school said, tomorrow no school, because we kill our enemies. And so at the morning after, 37 children ran to the place, and it was too early. The Germans were not here, and the Jews neither. And they waited until the night to show the shooting. And they told me we cried all the day. And I said, what did you stay? And they told me, because it was interesting for us, the children. So I had to discover that in a genocide, when you were sure you were not Jew, you were not gypsy, you were not gay, you were not communist, so it was interesting to watch. When you are safe, people like to see other people being killed. You are trying, among other things, to, to get the world to understand, to know what happened here, especially in light of what's happening around the world now. And you look at, at, at what ISIS is doing. What is the connection you're seeing? And, and what is it, the, the message you're hoping to get? The connection for the killing units of the German, the big question we have is how so few people, with the help of the neighbors, could kill so many people. During only three years, you know, two million point three Jews have been shot, plus the gypsy, plus the partisan, plus the, the communists. So how could they succeed with, without train, without camp, without fences? And so I think we are really to study Holocaust by bullets, because today, today, it's the model of the killing. Today, there is no Auschwitz anywhere. In Rwanda, there, is no, there was no Auschwitz. In Cambodia, no Auschwitz. And today, in Middle East, neither. Now, today, we are back to kill face to face, one by one. When people come to shoot in, in Brussels, or to shoot in Paris, or to shoot in Toulouse, or in their own country, they do that one by one. And I think, after Auschwitz, 
the mass killers decided to stop Auschwitz. They said, no, we will not, not do Auschwitz. Now we come back killing personal, killing personal crime. So we have to study Holocaust by bullets because it's a mother house of mass crimes of today. When you meet up with the, these people who are now old, who were children, and you're talking with them about what happened in their village, it's interesting because our executive producer, Dave Brown, his, his grandfather survived the camps, came back to his hometown in Poland, and he was part of a group that they actually dug up the, the, the bodies of, uh, they were called the martyrs of the Rakov forest, and they provided a proper burial for them. He, he has a picture of that. So there is a, a, a community coming back to embrace their own community. Did, the, did you find, when you talk to these people, that there was any guilt amongst the ones who witnessed this? So I would say no. The first thing, they want to speak. They want to speak before to die. They know that the poorest people carry the secret of Holocaust. And so why they want to speak? Because there is a proverb in Russia to say the war is finished when we bury the last victim. So for them, we come to finish the war. And I would say, I remember one woman, she was forced to go down on the mass grave barefoot to walk on the corpse, to make space. And she said, every shooting I had to go with other girls and to walk on the corpse and put earth to make space in the mass grave. And she said, suddenly I saw all my Jewish schoolmates and they had been killed and I had to walk on them like the others. And you know, it was the first time she said that. And it was a beautiful summer and she was on a bench with the neighbors and she said, I always dreamt to find somebody to say that. So I think also they feel like a strong trauma. You know, they were children and suddenly they saw all the neighbors killed in front of them. It was a spectacle, but it was also a trauma. Well, they are, they're painful memories, they're difficult memories, but they're memories that we need to, to capture and to hold so that hopefully things like this never happen again. And we thank you for helping to tell those stories thank and you. keep those memories alive. Father, it's thank a pleasure you. meeting you. You take care now. Thank you.